Morgan from Whole Latte Love. Hearts, burns, flowers, and more. Designs created by the interaction of espresso and frothed milk. So beautiful, it seems a shame to drink them, but they taste oh so good. You've seen them done, and now you want to give it a try. So today we're going to give you the basics of how to get started pouring latte art. To help us out, we've brought in our resident expert, Todd Salzman. Todd, you're head of espresso machine technology here at Whole Latte Love. What does that really mean? Well, that's a good question. It's kind of a made-up title, uh, but what it means is that I know a lot about the espresso machines. I've been working with the company since its inception, and I deal a lot with the manufacturers, and we make little upgrades and changes to the machines. I'm the head of our service department, so I've been inside all these machines uh, for years. And I've also been uh, working on doing some latte art and a few latte art competitions. Uh, so I'm having a good time with it. So it sounds like you know these machines really well. And when exactly did you start getting into latte art? Okay, well I started working on doing some nice frothing and steaming a long time ago when I first got into the business. But it's just the last maybe five years I really started to think, I want to do latte art. So I started focusing in on it. So Todd, you're going to give us the lowdown on the equipment and techniques for somebody that's looking to get into latte art. So first, let's start with the equipment. What do they need? Well, they're going to need a few things. First, they'll need a machine that has a commercial style steam tip so they, they can meter how much air they're putting into the milk. They'll need a pitcher of the proper size uh, for the cup they're using. And then they'll need, obviously, some good coffee, something based on nice crema, obviously, hopefully one that tastes good also, um, and a good cup. Uh, that's all you really need. And what kind of milk is best? Well, I always recommend whole milk because it tastes the best and it really mixes with the espresso well, so you get a much better tasting drink with it. Uh, some people don't like that because they don't want to drink whole milk, so they'll go for the skim milk. Uh, it won't make the latte art like the whole milk does, but you can get something out of it. It may pour a little heart, but nothing pretty. Todd, let's get into preparation. Here we've got a heat exchanger machine, so you can brew and steam at the same time, but for people that have a different machine at home, do you recommend that they brew or steam their milk first? Yeah, that's a good question. I prefer to brew first and then steam afterwards. That way my milk doesn't start to separate. Uh, you lose a little bit of crema on your coffee, but if you have a good coffee, uh, the crema will hold up long enough. Uh, so that's the way I like to do it. And what's the problem with the milk separating? Well, you won't get as good a pour. Then you have to stir the milk, you mix it up, you swirl it around the pitcher uh, to mix it up a little bit better. Sometimes to take two pitchers, pour it back and forth between them, but it takes, it, it's more difficult. So our first step is to brew our shot. What are we looking for in our espresso? Okay, well we need a, a coffee that'll produce a nice dark espresso with a nice crema, and hopefully something that tastes good also. And what are you gonna be using today? Okay, today I'm going against what some of the purists would say, but I'm using the Lavazza Top Class. Um, for Lavazza, it makes a nice crema, and a really nice flavor will mix with milk. So if you texture your milk just right, it blends with the coffee well and it tastes very good. So Todd, you're brewing two single shots here. Why is that? Okay. I like to do a single shot in this size cup because I think the combination of how much milk you have with the amount of espresso tastes excellent. This is a traditional cappuccino cup, uh, Italian cappuccino cup. And if you want it strong, you just do a double shot into the same cup. And how much milk are you gonna use? Okay, I, I'll be using a 12 ounce frothing pitcher, and of that I'll be using about five ounces of milk for each uh, cup. Now is that on the small side? It's kind of small for some people. I like it that size. I don't necessarily want a big uh, latte, but some people like them bigger, and you can do that. The technique stays the same. How's our shot looking? Well, it actually looked very good. Some people are gonna say that poured way too slow and it's gonna taste terrible. But for this Lavazza coffee, we found that if we overpack the port a little a little bit, and it brews really slow, it tastes fantastic in a latte. All right, our shots are all set, now it's time to froth. So why don't we go over some key points when frothing milk? Okay, first thing I wanna do is fill the pitcher up. I wanna go a little bit underneath that spout here. This is a 12 ounce pitcher. When you pour the milk, you also wanna be careful here that you don't get large bubbles when you're starting. Okay, always purge the wand out, get any water out. There's gonna be, there's gonna be condensation in there, so that's normal. And then bury the tip underneath the, the, the surface of the milk. Turn your wand on, then lower your pitcher down slowly and get your milk rotating. You hear that hiss in there? Just a little bit of a hiss. Not too much, you're gonna get big bubbles. Now I'm filling the pitcher with my hand. When the pitcher starts to get warm, I know I have enough air in it already. You don't wanna over, over uh, inject too much air in that. Okay, now I'm raising the pitcher and we're just rotating the milk in there, just swirling it. See how it's moving around? Any big bubbles that get sucked underneath. Feel the pitcher. When it starts to get pretty warm, you're good to go. What go. temperature are you looking for? I like about 140 degrees. Uh, if you get too hot, you lose the flavor of your milk. Okay. And that looks, that's a nice consistency. If you do get large bubbles in it, any kind of bubbles, you can tap it like this, it'll break the bubbles. And then you swirl like that to mix the milk together. 
All right, looks good. So we're ready to pour, right? Yes, we are. All right. After I swirl the milk up again, I make sure it's, uh, it's uh, all mixed together well. Pour a little milk into the center here, and you swirl it around. Then start pouring your milk. You raise your pitcher up high, which gets your milk near the bottom. And then you lower the pitcher down. Start rotating back and forth, nice and steady. And then pause for a second, and then swipe it across the center. Gives you a, a nice little design. There you go. Oh, thank you. Very nice, Todd. Thank you very much. Not my best, but uh, with the camera on, it's a little more difficult. <laughs> now, what are some key points you want people to take away about pouring latte art? Okay, the key things are don't overheat your milk, don't inject too much air, and get large bubbles in it. So be very careful when you start. The tip has to be below the surface of the milk. Open your steam knob, start frothing, lower the pitcher down so you hear a little hiss, like tss, tss, as you're injecting the air. And then after it starts to get warm, raise the pitcher up so you inject no more air into it. Mm -hmm. And don't overheat it. So get so it's nice and warm to the touch of the hand, maybe around 140 degrees. Okay. And lots of practice, right? Yes, lots of practice. All right, Todd, thank you so much for showing us how to do latte art. I'm Morgan from Whole Latte Love. Thanks for watching. The number one source for everything coffee is wholelattelove.com.